how come that the late Romans looked so drastically different from the earlier Romans? How come that the clothing of the late Romans had changed so much that indeed a Roman from the year 50 AD would not even recognize a Roman from the year 400 AD as even being a Roman? And not only the clothing had changed so drastically, but also the military equipment of the Roman soldiers. A late Roman legionary did look very different from an early Roman legionary. But why? What had happened? And also, when had this happened? Why did the Romans suddenly start wearing different clothing and different types of military equipment? Let's try to find out. One thing that is often misrepresented in basically all movies or other media taking place in the late Roman Empire is that the clothing and armor is almost always portrayed wrongly. We always see very Roman looking soldiers and civilians dressed in the way that we would immediately recognize. The civilians wear the toga or a short sleeve tunic and of course no trousers. And the legionaries wear the famous rectangular shields called scutum, the throwing lance called pilum, then the immediately recognizable helmet style, the famous lorica segmentata, the segmented Roman armor, and of course no trousers, but sandals. And of course the Roman short sword, the gladius. These are the Romans that we know and love. But in this video here I wanted to bring to attention the fact that the late Romans in actuality wore quite different things than the early Romans. Just as a very quick recap of the video, the civilians wore a late Roman style of tunic, the tunica manicata, then off my head, the Pileus Pannonicus, then often a type of Greek style cape called Clamis, which was held together on the side often by a brush, the Fibula, and they quite often wore trousers. There were also other types of garments, such as the Pinula, some form of coat, and the toga was still worn by senators and high ranking officials even in the 5th century AD, and even later. The soldiers, meanwhile, also looked profoundly different in 400 AD than 300 years earlier in the time of Emperor Trajan, so around 100 AD. They would wear a late Roman type of ridge helmet. There are quite a few different types of these helmets, most commonly denoted by the place they were unearthed in archaeological excavations. Unlike earlier Roman helmets, the skull of the ridge helmet was constructed from more than one element. Roman ridge helmets can be classified into two types of skull construction, bipartite and quadripartite, also referred to as intercesa type and bercasovo type respectively. The bercasovo type helmets were used as early as in the 310s AD. The Budapest helmet is probably from the 360s or 370s AD. Then the concesti type of helmet from the early 400s, then we have the Al-Hadita helmet from the late 300s or early 400s, the Iatrus type from the late 300s to early 400s, and the Doirne type helmet which was already seen in the 310s. But there are quite a few more helmet types which we are going to discuss in a separate video. Then the famous Lorica Segmentata segmented armor, which we immediately would connotate with Roman looking armor and this type of armor had all but disappeared by 400 AD and had been replaced by a chainmail or scale mail armor, Lorica Hamata and Lorica Squamata, respectively. The rectangular scutum gave way to a round shield. The pilum was replaced with a spiculum. The Roman short sword Gladius was replaced by the Roman long sword the Sparta. And the legionary started wearing long trousers, as compared to their earlier counterparts. But now to the important question, how and why did not only clothing, but also armor change so dramatically and so profoundly, and when exactly did that occur? The good times of the Roman Empire lasted for about 200 years. This time interval is referred to as the Pax Romana, from the beginning of the reign of the Emperor Augustus until the Antonine Plague arrived in the mid-160s. We would call these almost 200 years the Golden Age of Rome. But already during the reign of Marcus Aurelius and his co-emperor Lucius Verus, 
the empire saw itself faced with exceptional threats. Millions of Romans died due to a brutal disease, which we now believe to have been a smallpox virus. And due to the resulting manpower shortage, barbarians from the north were for the first time ever able to storm the Roman Limes border fortifications and to sack and plunder cities in their way. They could be driven back and peace was restored, but this was already the first warning shot for the Roman Empire that the barbarian threat from Germanic tribes should only become worse in the future. And indeed, already as a consequence, in that time, we would see the first changes in military equipment. The longsword, the Sparta, was used more and more often instead of the gladius, because slashing was now needed more than thrusting in the fights against the fierce Germanics. And the differentiation between legions and auxiliary troops began to blur more and more. In addition, because of easier production and maintenance, the chainmail and scalemail armor would begin to be used more frequently, alongside the segmented armor, which was still continued to be used, but less and less frequently. It is also already as a reaction to this crisis that the oval shield was used more instead of the old rectangular shield, the use of which had been discontinued at some point in the later 3rd century AD. Yet still, despite these changes, in the first half of the 3rd century, the Roman army still seemed as what we would call quite Roman-looking, with equipment still resembling in large part that of the earlier imperial times. Even the people themselves, the civilians, were largely still wearing the old-style Roman tunics and garments which we would identify as Roman. But then came the crisis of the 3rd century. As with regards to so many other topics, here too, this marked a profound turning point in Roman history. Suddenly the empire was facing the real possibility of complete collapse. The crisis which the Roman Empire faced under Emperor Marcus Aurelius was already no joke, but the crisis of the 3rd century was even more devastating. The empire was under attack from all sides by different external enemies, there was constant civil war and countless usurpers, there was another brutal disease raging, the Cyprian plague, and to top it off, the empire then even split into three parts. It looked really, really bad. Hello dear friends of late Roman history, it's me, Sebastian, the creator and the person behind Majorianus. I apologize for this brief interruption, but I wanted to ask for your help to support Majorianus and to support the channel so that we can keep Majorianus a channel about late Roman history. As you know, the YouTube algorithm is often not very kind to niche topics such as late Roman history and therefore I really need your support in order to keep Majorianus the way it is, to keep it a channel about late Roman history so that we can continue to explore this most fascinating era of the late Roman Empire and so that we won't have to turn Majorianus into a mainstream history channel. Only a few euros per month of support can really make all the difference. Thanks for considering to support me via Patreon or via a YouTube membership. I cannot thank you people enough. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Majorian himself would be proud. Thank you friends of late Roman history and back to the video. Faced with such an insane threat, the Romans needed to be inventive and adaptive by trying out new things. After all, it appeared that the old style was not good enough that the old equipment was not good enough and so the Romans started incorporating designs from the very enemies they faced. It is very likely that many of the Roman helmet designs were introduced from the various Germanic tribes that the Romans faced at the northern border of the empire. And more and more often Germanic tribes were hired as so-called foiderati, basically paid mercenaries in the service of Rome. It is very likely that this way more Germanic military equipment found its way into the Roman army, thus starting to influence the Roman equipment in a noticeable way. We can assume that this started in the 270s and 280s at the latest. On top, Illyricum started profiling itself as the topmost recruiting ground of the empire. 
The Illyrians were fierce fighters and therefore more of them were recruited into the ranks of the Roman army. In fact, at some point, the Illyrians became the backbone of the Roman army, if you will. In that time, emperors from the Danubian provinces were prominent and they certainly brought their style with them and thus certainly some of the changes in military equipment, but most likely also in clothing, can be attributed to this Danubian and Illyrian influence. It is certainly no coincidence that suddenly in the late 200s and early 300s, the Pileus Pannonicus suddenly appeared as the headwear fashion of choice, this famous late Roman hat, which, as you can derive from the name, came from the province of Pannonia, which is bordering on the northern part of Illyricum. And it is the Danubian province that saw itself attacked most frequently by different external enemies of Rome. So the combined influence of more Illyrian recruits and Danubian emperors, and then also more contact with Germanic tribes and more recruitment of Germanic tribes into the ranks of the Roman army, caused understandably a great change in Roman military equipment and clothing. More and more often, the Romans would start wearing trousers. The tunica manicata became more widespread, as did other types of, until then, foreign garments. What used to be denounced suddenly became fashionable. But not only the Germanic tribes, but the Sarmatians and even the Persians influenced the Romans. Some helmet types are attributed to Sarmatian and Persian influence. And certainly even the emperors themselves, as they continuously came into contact with the Persians, probably incorporated some oriental elements into their imperial retinue. It is no coincidence that eunuchs were seen much more often starting in the 300s and that the emperors started wearing more extravagant and richly decorated robes and diadems in that time as well. Then Germanics were settled more frequently in the empire itself. For instance, the Emperor Julian settled many Franks within the borders of the empire and the Emperor Constantine had already recruited large amounts of Franks into the Roman army. Therefore, they naturally influenced the Romans in their clothing and regarding their military equipment. Hence, we should not be surprised to see the later 3rd century as the great turning point of the Roman Empire with regards to stylistic appearance. The empire almost fell and only through a series of very capable emperors was it saved. It could very well be that the psychological shock of the Roman population also caused them to seek change, to want to change and to try out new things, hoping that this change might prevent such disasters happening in the future. Maybe that is why they were more open to accept new clothing styles and to more readily implement different military equipment and armor styles from enemies into their own armies, because they realized that maybe the old ways were not suitable anymore in these trying times. And so therefore, we would start to see this change in appearance of the Romans, both regarding civilians, but also regarding the Roman army itself, starting from the mid 3rd century onwards. This certainly was a gradual change and by no means abrupt. But we can imagine that you would see more and more often the late Roman type of army units and of civilian clothing and less and less often the old one. By 350 AD, you would probably be surprised to even see somebody wearing a Lorica Segmentata armor anymore. They probably had completely fallen out of use by that time even though, of course, they could have still been worn by some die-hard traditionalists. But this is pure speculation. The same goes for civilian clothing. The more Rome tried to fight its external enemies, the more it realized that it had to become more like them in order to survive. And indeed, this worked remarkably well for a long time. It is no coincidence that the 4th century was more stable as compared to the chaos of the 3rd century. These adaptations allowed the Roman Empire to survive longer than it would have, but as a consequence, the Romans lost something that made them recognizably Roman. We could say that through centuries of exchange, contact and war with other tribes or empires, the Romans had lost a part of their cultural identity. 
they had adapted and transformed, and it all started with the crises that the Roman Empire faced already as early as the 2nd century AD, but then really accelerated in the later part of the crisis of the 3rd century from 270 AD onwards. Some emperors tried to counteract this, for instance by issuing bans on types of clothing such as trousers, which had happened a few times from 399 AD onwards, but to no avail. By then, it was of course too late to change that trend. The Romans themselves had changed already so much, and there was no turning back anymore. If you want to learn more about this topic, I can highly recommend the book Roman Military Equipment by M. C. Bishop and J. C. N. Coulston, which also served as the research basis for parts of this video. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And I would especially like to thank our new Kaisar supporters, Prometheus, Eric Nordic and Robert Hinton. Thank you so much Prometheus, Eric Nordic and Robert Hinton for supporting Majorianos in such a generous way. And I would of course like to thank everyone who is supporting Majorianos in any form, be it through Patreon, YouTube membership or through a PayPal donation. Thank you for supporting Majorianos so that I can keep this a channel about late Roman history. And if you want to learn more about the clothing style of the late Romans, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you want to learn more about the late Roman army itself, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.